that period. Now, if you're a temporary graduate or school visa holder, your visa will be extended to provide an additional five years from today, uh, in addition to the time you've already been in Australia with a pathway to permanent residency at the end of that period. And we will also provide a five-year visa with a pathway to permanent residency uh, for future Hong Kong applicants for temporary skill visas, subject to meeting an updated skills list and appropriate labour marking testing. Uh, we will also put uh, arrangements in place uh, to ensure we focused on Hong Kong applicants to study and work in regional areas to help address skill shortages in those areas with express pathways to permanent residency as already applies after three years. We will also look at new incentives and arrangements to attract export orientated Hong Kong based businesses to relocate to Australia, particularly where they have a strong potential for future growth and employment of Australians. So for existing temporary work visa holders, student visa holders and graduate student visa holders, uh, they can be here for five years. Five years. Uh, and that is an extension from their existing arrangements that they would have now. Some of them would be some way into their current visa. They're already here, another five years. Um, those who are looking to the end of their study, and they would normally get two years, two years that will be extended to five years. And the other part is, of course, uh, through our Global Talent Program, to be uh, working with states and territories, and I'll be discussing this with states and territories tomorrow at National Cabinet, uh, at ways where if there are businesses that wish to relocate to Australia, creating jobs, bringing investment, creating opportunities for Australia, uh, then we will be very proactive in seeking to encourage that and uh, to see that business activity, those jobs created here in Australia. Now, I want to stress that we are not expecting uh, large numbers of applicants um, in any time soon. Um, what we uh, have in place is the normal application mechanisms for these visas. The same rules apply to getting a student visa. The same rules apply to getting a temporary work visa. The same market testing restrictions are in place in terms of labour market testing for the awarding of temporary skilled visas. All of that remains the same. What we are doing is extending uh, the opportunity uh, for those visas uh, out to five years in total and looking to uh, recruit, if you like, other businesses that may become footloose as a result of the changes that have occurred in Hong Kong. Um, and I imagine there'll be many other countries in the region and around the world, indeed, that would be seeking uh, to attract those businesses to Australia and uh, talented applicants as well uh, as they make their own decisions about their, where they wish to live. Uh, in the future, Australia will be uh, part of that group of countries which will be both encouraging, welcoming and uh, taking steps to ensure we're actively engaged. And so with that, I'll hand it over to the Acting Minister for Immigration and many other things, um, Alan Tudge, and ask you to go through the details. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> thanks very much, Prime Minister. As you'd be aware, Hong Kong has immense global talent and great businesses there which and we want to attract more of them to Australia because that will generate more wealth and more jobs for Australians. Now we already do very well in terms of attracting people from Hong Kong but today we're outlining some further opportunities uh, for skilled people, for entrepreneurs, for significant investors and for businesses to come to our country. Let me go through some of the specific measures which the PM has touched on. Um, first up in relation to students. So the, the current and future students from Hong Kong will be eligible for a five year temporary graduate visa on the successful conclusion of their studies and that will come with a pathway for permanent residency. So former students who are already on a graduate uh, visa will have up to five years from now as well. Now, students who decide to study at a regional campus will be able to continue with the current regime where they can get permanent residency after three years. In relation to temporary skilled visas, um, current temporary skilled visa holders from Hong Kong who are in Australia at the moment will be eligible for an additional five years in Australia with a pathway to permanent residency at the end of that period. And that is about 600 people in Australia at the moment. Not, not a huge number. Future Hong Kong applicants for temporary skilled visas 
will also be eligible for a five-year visa, provided they meet the existing criteria. Now, that is that you must fit with one of the uh, skills shortage criteria, and that list will be updated shortly, and it's going to be a significantly reduced list compared to what it is today. Um, of course, there'll need to be labour market testing as well from the sponsoring employer to prove that they are unable to find an Australian to do the job. Of course, a person can also qualify through the Global Talent Temporary Visa Scheme, which is really where we target the exceptionally talented people, particularly in the IT fields, um, to come here on a temporary basis um, if the employer particularly is willing to pay above um, the high income threshold. These future temporary skilled visa holders will also have a pathway to permanent residency after five years. Now, in relation to you know, what, what I call the, the super talent, um, of which there is many in Hong Kong, um, we started the Global Talent Scheme visa um, not that long ago with the idea of providing a permanent residency visa for the absolute super global talent. And we certainly know that there is some of that talent in Hong Kong and we will be uh, continuing with our program there, but we'll be prioritising applicants from Hong Kong for that scheme and providing some additional resources there as well to target those particular individuals who are real job multiplying people, who create businesses, who are entrepreneurs, who have that tech talent um, that the world is looking for, frankly. And they will then have a permanent residency visa to enable them um, to come into the country. That will be the same as well for our business uh, investment programs as well, where again we'll be prioritising some of the applicants um, from Hong Kong to come into Australia. Same criteria still applies for those applicants, uh, but they'll get priority if they're applying from Hong Kong. We'll also be supporting future applications. We'll be uh, reopening the visa uh, application centre in Hong Kong, um, which was shut down during the COVID-19, um, at the beginning of the COVID-19 period. Finally, just in relation to uh, attracting businesses from Hong Kong. As the PM mentioned, we'll be developing new incentives for uh, export-oriented Hong Kong-based businesses to relocate to Australia. And with these economic incentives will also be visa pathways for all critical staff to come to Australia and have a pathway to permanent residency. Now we know that there are over 1,000 uh, international businesses who have their regional headquarters presently in Hong Kong. And we also know that many have already signalled that they're looking to relocate elsewhere in the world. And this includes media businesses, financial services businesses, large consulting businesses, which have already signalled they're looking elsewhere. And we want them to look to Australia to come to and set up shop. And so we'll be developing incentives for them to do so, but with that, a package of visas as well, so that all the critical staff can come and potentially relocate in one of our cities or a region um, and be able to get pathways to permanent residency. So that, I think, is a great opportunity for Australia. Um, these companies will be looking elsewhere, so we'll need to be competitive, um, but that's what we're going to be um, looking at um, and developing those incentives um, over, the, over the next uh, period, the next few weeks. So let me repeat again, there is, just, there is so much talent in Hong Kong. Um, there are great businesses on, in Hong Kong, and we know that many individuals now might be looking elsewhere because they do want to be in a freer country, they want to be in a democratic country, and we want to make it attractive for that super talent to consider Australia, and that's what these measures do. Thank you, Alan. Um, I should also stress that the refugee and humanitarian stream remains available for those who are seeking to apply through that channel, and that is available to people all around the world. Um, what we're announcing here today relates to uh, the existing components of our immigration program, and this will all be accommodated very comfortably uh, within the existing caps that we have on the overall uh, level of uh, visas for permanent residency into Australia. And that is particularly the case because of the significant decline uh, in intake that has occurred because of COVID and we don't expect that to change uh, quickly. And so there is ample room. But I want to stress again that this is being done with continued strong labour market testing 
and this is about creating jobs in Australia. Prime Minister, in making these dual announcements, both the visa arrangements, but critically also the suspension of the extradition mm. agreement, what statement is the Australian government making about China's adherence to 